Okay, and now to something completely different. Given uh. your various interests in languages, science, and mathematics, which four famous people, living or dead, would you invite to dinner and why? Oh, okay, that's a really good one. Um, okay, so... Um, Okay, I'm gonna. Have, okay, let's let's um, let's start off with mathematics, um, because uh, uh, let's start off with mathematics. Um, Pierre de Fermat, I would like to I would like to have dinner with him and really ask him where, what did you actually write down when you wrote that thing in the margin and you said that you had this elegant proof. What did you have in mind so that we could actually find out if the thousand pages of Andrew Wiles' proof is necessary? Um, you know, if, if Fermat did actually have deeper insight that we have una been unable to recover, or if he just made an error. I think that would be interesting. Um, I think Richard Feynman, this is Richard Feynman, I would, I would enjoy, um, I would I'd really like to meet him. Um, obviously via a time machine. Um, I use a number of his quotes. I found him very, I find a lot of his thinking very fresh and inspirational. I mean, he's not a perfect individual, but he has a very practical relationship to knowledge. And yet he also draws on an immense amount of theory, but he makes his, his approach to science is engaging. Uh, it is playful, uh, but he's not superficial. I think that I, for me, I think that'd be absolutely fascinating. Um, in terms of, uh, I think in terms of language, I think a really interesting one, I'm going to pick somebody who's alive. Um, so ling from a linguistics point of view, um, Noam Chomsky, who is, who's still, I, I would like to, I would like to talk to him, but perhaps I would like to talk to a past version of him. Um, because he had some particular theories about language, and you know, I, I, I read his uh, stuff that gave us the whole idea of context-free grammars, regular expressions, and all this kind of stuff. I think that would be really, really interesting um, uh, to really find out the other side of it um, and where he's coming from, because he presented it in a very academic way, um, and he's certainly and he's got a lot of he's got a lot on a lot of subjects to offer. So I'd take him present or past, but I think a past version of him could be quite interesting. Um, and I think, I think, I think we'd also. Um, I'm going to go for a computer scientist as my last one, um, and uh, Barbara Liskoff. Um, I've, I've followed her work for many years. She is she is still alive, but I followed her work for many years. I've managed to accidentally avoid everywhere she's ever spoken. Um, she is uh, perhaps a little old now to be traveling and doing talks, um, uh, but. Her contributions to distributed programming, type, um, you know, our concept of uh, types, uh, type systems, uh, modular systems, um, paradigms, uh, language design, all of this stuff. I, I think her work has been immense, not just in the 1970s, but the influence that it's had. Um, I, I think that would be really, you know, she'd be somebody to meet um, if I could possibly afford to. But, you know, yeah, great questions. Great question, that one. Okay. Um, let's ask you about testing. Regarding unit tests, what is your take on writing mocks versus calling real code and unit tests? There are some debate about the over mocking I heard. Right. Yeah. I think we need to. Get, there's a lot going on here, and I'll, I'll I'll take out the separate things to give you to give you a sort of a, a sensible answer. Um, the original vision of mocks was to help you design interfaces. That was the original idea. Most people don't are not aware of that and they don't use it like that. They use mocks as, oh my goodness, I've got an external dependency, I need to block it out. Or I've got some kind of slow dependency on the database, I must mock it out. That's how a lot of people think. They think mocks is a way of dealing with a dependency mess. It's like, no, 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 the whole purpose of mocks was so you didn't have a dependency mess. It was to cause you to design. The idea of using the mock from a test-driven perspective is you learn what interface you need. You don't say, somebody doesn't come along and say, hey, I've got this code, you can use it, and you use it. You don't do that. What you do is you say, my application needs this functionality. You're offering me 
this much function, I don't need that much, and it's not the right shape for my application. So it's a good implementation, but let me write the interface that I want, so I might adapt it. So what you're doing is you're inverting the dependency, you're inverting the way you think about interfaces. You take it from the consumer perspective. I'm a piece of code, I would like some facility. What should that facility look like to make my code easy? Yeah. So from that point of view, I think mocking would be great and I wish more people would do it. I, would people, I wish people would do that original philosophy of mock-driven design because our APIs would be smaller, our classes would be smaller, everything would be smaller and much, uh, you know, the dependencies would be much better managed. So that's my first, the first point is, yeah, I wish people would do that. Um, the next thing is when it comes to, but for me, the most obvious boundaries when I talk about mocking and when I introduce mocking, it is to do with the most, you know, when people are saying, well, where do I define the scenes where I should or should not be mocking? I tend to come back to a very simple definition and unit tests. What do we mean by unit test? And for me, a unit test is something that um, iso is isolated from external dependencies. Um, and therefore, um, put it another way, uh, a unit test, the outcome of a unit test is based on the code of the test and the code that is being tested. That's it. If it passes, it's because of this code. If it fails, it's because of this code. Okay, that's it. There's nothing else. And that's a unit test. What if I am testing with a file system? Well, I can have perfectly correct code and a perfectly correct test, but I might have the wrong permissions. The files might be full. Hey, well, you know, let's, uh, let's refer back to Toyota. Um, I can have perfectly correct code and perfectly correct tests and my test can, and my test can fail. In other words, it's not showing me there's a problem with my code. It's showing me there's a problem with the outside world. Um, what if I have code that um, uh, seems to work uh, in the presence of threads. Um, and then one day it doesn't work in the presence of threads. The only reason it was working, it was actually broken all that time. The only reason it appeared to work was because of something external to my code, the scheduling policies of the operating system. So basically, if you're dealing with anything where the correctness of the outcome is not based on the code that you're looking at, then that's not a unit test. And that doesn't mean, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just telling you it's not a unit test. It's not fully isolatable. So from my point of view is you want to get as much, you know, and sometimes we will then talk about these isolated aspects. We will need to actively isolate them and there will be something we call what's on the other side of that. Well, for per testing purposes, how do I, how do I do it unless I use uh, a mock? Okay. So therefore I would be using it in that case. Um, I wouldn't be using the real code as a unit test. I'd be using that as an integration test and I might, but my integration test would be a lot simpler. And also, you know, my unit test is going to be a lot faster. And my overall design, a lot more loosely coupled, a lot better separation of concerns. So that's the way I approach this one. What about the problem of overmocking? The problem of overmocking tends to come from when we see a bunch of code and we say, oh, here is the code. And in our head, we think, I can't change the code, but I need to test it. And maybe that's just in our head. Maybe it's actually a reality of um, the, the, the choices that have been made that we have not made and cannot change. At that point, you end up with a code that's already a mess of dependencies, and you do end up with overmocking because you have mocks returning mocks returning mocks. It's very complicated. If you were to design it with from the beginning, you would say, no, no, we don't need this tangle. This one idea should become two. It's two separate ideas, separation of concerns, um, which would lead to separation um, of dependencies and so on. So, yeah, overmocking. Um, that's one source of overmocking. The other source is where people start testing implementation details rather than interface details or semantic details. And that's a very common thing because historically, another term for mock, or mock testing was endo testing. We don't use that term anymore, but it's testing from the inside. It's like you're testing callbacks. You're expecting certain things. And that becomes very tightly coupled to an implementation. If you change that, then you've overspecified it and you've broken it. Um, so these are so that's kind of where I sit on this. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an easy decision. It's not a one or a zero or a black or a white. Um, but I do see a lot of tendencies that lead to overmocking. Test with real code as long as it's within your control. 
don't 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 factor out testing can you know i've seen people actually sort of say oh i'm going to mock out the container that i'm using as my private representation no that is absolutely not the way to think about it um, that container is private it's private for a reason it's an implementation detail but your interaction with it, emitting events to something else that receives events that's an external detail that deserves to be mocked so i hope that covers that covers quite a lot um i normally spend a few days talking about this but yeah hopefully that's uh, giving you a reasonable idea and a reasonable answer yeah i think let's see um 